Hey guys, welcome back to Sky Talks Books. My name is Sky, and today we're going to be doing a little book haul. I have a problem. I can't stop. I cannot. It's an addiction. I cannot stop buying books. But I must say, in my defense, a lot of these, most of these are from the bargain bin. And then we've got some... Okay, so I keep asking for this one particular book from my childhood home, and that is my copy of The Picture of Dorian Gray. And my mom just keeps bringing me every book apart from that. And it's fun. It's like, what's she going to bring this time? <laughs> We're going to get to that at the end. But for now, let's just jump right in. Let's start with a classic. We have Agnes Grey by none other than Anne Bronte, the least kind of famous and well-known Bronte sister. But they say she's the most underrated. Since I read Wuthering Heights, it began my sort of obsession with the Bronte sisters, so I want to read all of their works. And also, all of these books come with these, like, stickers. If you know how to get these off, like, safely without ripping the book, please do tell me. So Agnes Grey is the touching story of a young girl who decides to enter the world out as a governess, but whose bright illusions of acceptance, freedom, and friendship are gradually destroyed. Isn't that just the way when you enter life, you know, at any time? Any illusion that you have is destroyed somewhere around 24 years of age. So, looking forward to this. Next we have, okay, so this was a cover buy. So what attracted me to this book was the cover. It is Head to Toe by Joe Orton. And then I looked it up on Goodreads and it's kind of somewhat of a bit of a cult classic, a very strange, magical realism, fantasy, comedy, not fantasy, no, 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 sorry, not fantasy. Just because it's magic realism doesn't automatically make it fantasy. I kind of want to get away from uh, literary fiction for a little bit and kind of discover some uh, hidden gems in just like genre fiction. So this uh, said on the back that it is like a modern day Alice in Wonderland for uh, adults, even though it's not that modern anymore. It is from, uh, it was first published in 1971 and this one is from, and this edition seems to be from 1990. So it features a, well, on the back it says gender-bending policewoman. Um, I don't think you can say that. I tried to take off one of the stickers and this is what happened. Next, we have, keeping in the theme with the Brontes, we have The Brontes Went to Woolworths uh, by Rachel Ferguson. And so it's a Virago modern classic. Because I've never heard of writers, and I've never heard of this book before. It's, so it's not actually about the Bronte sisters for some reason. I, I don't know if it's kind of like a retelling. So it's about these three sisters during the, or before the First World War, Deirdre, Katrine, and Sheil. And they all live with their mother, and one of them is a governess, and one of them is a journalist who once declined a marriage proposal because she was in love with Sherlock Holmes at the time. The other one is like obsessed with Shakespeare. It honestly just sounds um, like a good time for any like literature lovers. Hopefully it will be like a little hidden gem. Next we have, you know, you know what's coming next. It's Famous Five. Cause you know, I'm a bit of a collector of Famous Five. So this one is uh, the 12th uh, book in the series, and it is The Secrets of the Caves. And this one is from... 1984. This one is from 1984. Um, this is when they're on holiday in Wales. And like, look, I just, I love The Famous Five, not only because I read it as a kid, um, but because, I don't know, it just fills me with this very like, I wanna say child childlike, but it's almost just like human. Um, I mean, children are human, <laughs> but this just desire for adventure, this sense of adventure, they're also kind of funny without intending to be. But I will say, after reading them, the dog is always portrayed um, inaccurately on the covers. He's portrayed, like Timmy, he's portrayed, because he's one of the Famous Five, uh, the most famous of the Famous Five. He's always portrayed as a, like a, this beautiful looking collie, but actually, because I, I read the very first book where he is introduced for the first time, and he's somewhat of a, a weird, ugly-looking mutt. Not ugly. No dogs are ugly. But he's described that way. Like, he's not the cutest of dogs, but his personality is what makes him adorable and amazing and famous. But 
on the covers he's always just like this very perfect looking collie. So that's my only qualm. Another, uh, you know, middle school book, which I've never actually, I've never heard of this author before or read him, but it's The Curse of Werewolf Castle. I, I like uh, kids books as a palate cleanser between like these very heavy books that I read um, and very, you know, um, cl cumbersome classics sometimes. Um, I like to just have a little bit of a palate cleanser, if you will. Um, and Gordon Snell is uh, described as kind of Eden Enid Blyton-esque, which Enid Blyton is the author of Famous Five. So what's there not to love? Werewolves, love it. Castles, love it. Curses, yeah. And this is from 1996. I was six. So just keeping you up to date with the timeline. Okay, next we have historical fiction and I'm very new to historical fiction. Um, I don't think I've actually read historical fiction before, but this is uh, the Far Side of a Kiss by Anne Averty. And not gonna lie, I just love any covers like this with like classical like Renaissance women or just paintings in general on the cover. Uh, it's luminous intelligence, humor and sympathy. Early 19th century London and the 19 year old Sarah live and breathe. I'll just read the blurb. Um, blurb. When William Hazlitt published Liber Amoris, his book of love, in 1823, scandal rocked the literary world. He had chosen as the object for his grand romantic passion a mere serving maid, and she had delusioned him by proving just as tawdry as all the rest. But what of Sarah Walker, the victim of Hazlitt's unfortunate obsession? In a magnificent work of imaginative empathy, Anne Haverty rescues her from the silence and obscurity to let her tell her side of the story. She describes her gradual seduction by the wild man of letters as she tried to ward off inappropriate advances without offending him. Yes, that is always the challenge, isn't it? So I think this is going to be something different for me anyway. Um, next we have, uh, I believe this is kind of a uh, unheard of modern classic. It is Syrup by Max Barry. Again, I was just very drawn, drawn to this cover and then I read the blurb. It sounded pretty cool. It's about this guy, this young entrepreneurial guy who invents a, a soft drink, a soda pop. Um, and that made me think of me when I was a kid because I was obsessed with um, trying to invent uh, new flavors of uh, yeah, fizzy drinks. Uh, we call them fizzy drinks here in Ireland. I didn't succeed. So, and it is scathingly funny. Scathing. I don't like the word scathing. But it seems like it really, um, like, plays with uh, format and stuff. Uh, and then there's all these, like, bu bubbles as page breaks, which is a nice little touch. Okay, there's a character named Six. So, okay, I hope they're not all named after numbers. Oh, so what if they are? <laughs> Sky, don't be so narrow-minded. Uh, next is one that I have read before and I just, I needed to own because I love it. It is one of my favorite classics. It is The Pearl by John Steinbeck. This is a beautiful little edition. I love the, the black and the yellow. Mandarin classic. I've never heard of these, this uh, edition of classics. Whoever owned this was very afraid that I was gonna steal their identity and they just needed to scribble out their name. Okay, next. Now this is a hidden gem. This is a hidden gem because not many people, I believe, know about this author. It is P.G. Woodhouse and uh, this is the Blanding's Castle. Uh, this is one of the Blanding Castle's ones. A dear friend of mine recommended P.G. Woodhouse and she told me to start with the Blanding's Castles and I'm like, kind of bad at following instructions, so I started with Jeeves and I just fell in love with Jeeves, which is just like these series of short stories about this butler called Jeeves. And he's kind of the quintessential, like what you think of when you think of like a, an old English um, butler. Yeah, Jeeves is just the perfect man in every sense of the word. Uh, so I haven't read The Blanding's Castle at all, but like, I think since I know I love PJ Woodhouse's style, his like comedy, uh, which is like very subtle and like, mm, I love it. It's just so delightful. This was first published in 1929. So yeah, let me know if you've heard of uh, P.G. Woodhouse. Um, Cause I think he, as far as I can tell, he's pretty criminally underrated. Next we have Wicked Wyoming Nights. So in August, there is 
I think the most exciting booktube event and it is called Garb August where you just read trash. Believe it or not I actually bought this before I even heard of Garb August. Um, why did I buy this? Great question because I'm not really a huge lover of romance. Firstly this cover is iconic. Secondly, a while ago I, I was reading like my old diaries from when I was 18 and there was this recurring theme. It would just be like me ranting and ranting about like how much I hated my life, which perspective really wasn't that bad. Um, but every now and then I would just be like, it's okay, everything will be fine when I'm finally free in Wyoming. I just have to make it to Wyoming. And like, I don't remember ever wanting to go to Wyoming. I don't, like there was never expl any explanations in the diaries about why Wyoming? You know what I mean? And why did I give up on my dream of Wyoming? Did I think that Wyoming was just a place where mental illness didn't exist? I think. Anyway, so I bought this for my 18 year old self. Uh, Wicked Wyoming Nights. Uh, I guess this is... This is being free in Wyoming. And, but now, you know, it's good because I can read it in Garb August. I have a few other books for Garb August, but now is not the time to talk about that. Okay, next we have a classic that I just kind of bought because I love these editions. You know, I feel like everyone has their like editions that they love. They'll just buy whatever book because it is of a certain line of classics, you know? Whether it's the Black Penguin classics or the Red Spines or a lot of people are obsessed with NYRB. But yeah, for me, it's these um, these Penguin popular classics. I absolutely love them. Um, so yeah, this is an, an adventure book called Moonfleet by J. Mead Faulkner. It's a classic tale of mystery and high adventure in a Dorset smuggling village. I've been kind of getting into adventure lately. I think it's, I don't know, it's, it's like good for the summer, you know? I just, I also want to read like lesser known classics. Uh, so it's about this guy who has a peaceful existence and that ends when he discovers a passage into the vault of the powerful Mohun family who once had control of Moonfleet. Yeah, so it seems to be a story about smugglers. Now we're coming to the end. Okay, all right. So, oh. <laughs> Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now I did not, I bought these books online and I absolutely would never pick a movie or a TV show tie-in cover. This was a mistake. So I am probably gonna, you know, unhaul this and get a different edition. Um, this is awful. Who would want, who would want this? <laughs> Do, but also, if you want to swap, <laughs> it's really nice actually when you think about it. Like this is a good edition. So if you have a edition of Jane Eyre and you want this one, we can do a little swapsies. Ugh, I mean, honestly, why? Why do, why do they make these, these tie-in books? Nobody wants them. I, I suppose they must want them because they keep making them. But the, yeah, I mean, this is a chunker, you know? And if I'm reading a chunker, I wanna... Or maybe this will be my edition where like, I don't really care about what happens to it. Like I could read this um, dirt biking if I wanted to, because I don't care what happens to it. This will be my dirt biking edition. Everyone needs a, a dirt biking edition, you know, of, <laughs> of Jane Eyre. It's a must. Okay, this was a freebie that they just threw in, which, you know, maybe actually now that I think about it, this was their way of saying sorry for this monstrosity. So just, they just threw in this random book called Clock Dance by Ann Taylor, which is a Sunday Times bestseller. And um, I hate the cover and I also kind of hate the sound of the plot, uh, but it was free. So I think this is just liter this is literary fiction, which I'm trying to sort of get away from. Okay, now we're getting to the books. Uh, I've got three books here that um, came from... Uh, my family home in the middle of nowhere. I'm not gonna- I almost told you my, the address of my family home. You would go and you'd steal all my mother's chickens. I know you would. Okay, so actually, this is my copy of Dracula, which I bought this. So yeah, I bought this when I was 19. Uh, I didn't- I think I started it and I just could not- I mean, I was very, very new to classics and it was just like, I had completely different expectations going into this. But I'll definitely give it another go for sure. I think now that I'm a little bit more versed in the classics, maybe, maybe I'll be able to um, enjoy this. I'm not a fan of this edition. These were, these were editions that they came out with for a while. I don't really know why. And they all had these green, this weird lime green color. The spine isn't 
really easy, even that nice. Maybe for some people this is their edition that they have to buy. Okay, next. There's a, a Dance with Dragons. Number one, Dreams and Dust, George R. R. Martin. This is not mine. This is my older brother's, who is like a huge, deep, deep fantasy, high fantasy fan. And so I guess my mom thought this was mine. And she, he moved to, he moved to another country. I guess I'm keeping this here for him if he ever wants it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he bought me for Christmas one year. He bought me. This is when I didn't really read at all. Like I was not a reader. And he bought me um, the Name of the Wind by Patrick. Rough house. I mean, it's huge. It is a huge book. It was brand new, but I mean, I've been like carrying it around for years and years since he bought it for me, like to each house that I've moved into. So it's gotten kind of a little bit uh, worn and torn. But I ha like I haven't read it because I'm I'm afraid of it. But he says I absolutely need to read it. But I can't read this because this is like like the fifth in a huge series or something. But you know, it's a it's George R. R. Martin. No, it looks good on the on the shelves, I suppose. Uh, okay, and next we have Hearts of Fire. Eight women in the underground church and their stories of costly faith. To be honest, this does sound really interesting because I love anything to do with underground secret societies. Okay, this isn't a secret society. It's basically, I presume it's when um, Catholics weren't allowed to practice their faith. Either you marry or you die if you're a Christian. Then there's no place for you in this city. You will die here alone. Oh. Okay. So there you go, guys. That is a bit of a weird book haul. I feel like it was a weird book haul, but I do say that every time. So guys, uh, if you want more chaotic book hauls, um, subscribe. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.